December the 30th, 1979, on the hillside. It's set into motion time. God did not establish the calendar nor the watch. Man did. Would you allow me this morning? Would you allow me this morning? This morning, I'm going to do a little prophesying. Whether you like it or not. If Jeannie Dixon can prophesy for the coming year, if Billy Graham can prophesy for the coming year, Lee Douglas is going to prophesy for the coming year. In the year 1980, let me tell you some of the things that are going to happen within this, I won't go outside of this body. In 1980, we're going to experience the death of someone of our midst, our very close member of a family of our midst. In the year 1980, some of us are going to be separated or divorced. In the year 1980, some of us will lose our jobs, our sources of income, and suffer hardships. In the year 1980, some of us will suffer pain from injury or from sickness. In this coming calendar year, somebody's faith in the Lord is going to be shaken. And they're going to be in doubt and wonder and question if it was all ever really real. Now, lest all of my prognostications fall flat and none of them happen, but some of those are going to happen. All of those are going to happen to someone. But lest I be wrong in everything, there's five points, I want to add one more to balance it out so that I, you can't say I missed on every one of them, and that is some of us will have colds and or have a flat. <laughs> now, you mark down my predictions, and I will not have missed all of them. Now, I have no real problem in saying these things, and there are five, six very negative thoughts. But I have no problem in saying them because I have this morning looked into the previous year and every one of those happened this last year. All of those happened this last year. And the odds are marvelously bad that they're going to happen in this coming year. People have died. People have become separated. People have divorced. People have had pain and sickness. People have lost their jobs and suffered hardships. People have had their faith shaken. They are in, in doubts and questioning, wondering if it's ever real. And yet here we are. We've made it to the next, to the last day of the year. In spite of all the hardships, in spite of the pains, in spite of the suffering, in spite of the sorrows, the disappointments, we're here. Alive, we made it. Isn't it great? This is part of what Hosea was saying in this sixth chapter and these six verses. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. Hosea was saying, in this just previous history, there have been those events that came into our lives in which almost destroyed us. <coughs> in which we could not understand what was taking place. We could not see the end. The clouds in our mind were such that we did not understand. But have patience. God will heal us. He will find our wounds. He will bring us up. 
if you're standing here at this part of this particular year and, and you look back to the last months, the last 12 months, and you see some hardships that you suffered, remember, you made it through. If you look and you see some pain and sorrow, remember, you made it. If there were disappointments, if there were times when you can count as, as lost in this past 12 months, remember, you made it. You're here. Don't let it destroy you. Hosea said, all pain has come upon us. We have been to the point of when we thought that, that all around us was completely destroyed and torn apart and, and just pieces lying about, none of them fitting, none of them going together. Remember, God will heal us. God has allowed the events of this past year he did not cause them all. Most of those things that brought us pain, we brought upon ourselves. But he has allowed us to experience them for our own benefit. Well, it may have been, been at the time it seemed totally unrealistic and without any reason or cause. And because of the pain or the sorrow or the heartache or the or the times whenever it seemed like there was no real reason for continuing, he has allowed those that we might come through stronger. Be assured that God was there watching all the time. I, now I left a negative note on my five prophecies and let me come in and, and prophesy five positive ones because you see just as surely as there will be those of our midst who will die or our members of our immediate families that will there will also be new births that will bring joy to our lives just as surely as there will be divorces or separations, there will be new lives that are joined together. Just as surely as there will be those who lose their jobs, there will be new occupations that are discovered that will bring a whole new sense of fulfillment to someone's life. Just as surely as there will be illnesses, in this coming year there are going to be the medical discoveries that are going to bring back the healing or bring back to a fullness and richness of life for those who thought they had no hope. And just as, as positively that there will be those whose faith is shaken, there are going to be people whose faith is strengthened to the point that they shall accomplish great things in God's name. Oh, yes. Colds will wear off and flats will be fixed. <laughs> Joshua, there is a fascinating story. I've always liked this man, Joshua. I wished I could be like him. The Israelites had wandered for 40 years. They were once again standing on the those who had survived. They were once again standing on the edge of the promised land. God speaks to Joshua and he says, Now have I not commanded you? Have I told you before? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will go with you wherever you go. Now here were the Israelites. You remember the 40 years previous, the spies came back and said, Hey, there's giants over there. We can't take that line. They're, they're big troops over there. We can't do that. There's too many. They're too big. They're too powerful. Consequently, they suffered for 40 years. Now they're back. God says, go into the land. And I'm sure that there were rumors. Didn't Hey, don't you remember our fathers? Remember how they talked about the giants? I wonder if they're still there. They could have stood and been just as hesitant and just as fearful and just as disobedient. God says, Joshua, you go, the 
because I'm going to be with you. Joshua says, but Lord, what, what, what about the people? I believe you. What about the people? I've heard your voice. Are you going to speak to them as you have spoken to me? And God says, no, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, though. I'm going to go with you one better. You have the ark that I commanded to be built. Let the ark go ahead of the people. Let them see that I'm out there. And when they see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests who are Levites carrying it, you're to move out with from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you've never been this way before. We have had experiences in our lives in the past year that have changed us. And in the coming 12 months period of time, we've never been this way before. But God is there waiting for us. God knows what's there. He knows what's to be expected. And he goes to prepare the way before us. If I could give you only one scripture, if I was ever limited to only one scripture in all of the Bible, I think that it would be the one verse in Philippians which Paul wrote. It's actually a verse and a half. It's in the third chapter the last half of the 13th verse and all of the 14th. He says, One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me in Christ Jesus. Forgetting everything that is behind, I look forward with anticipation. May I suggest three things? Do it quickly. That as we go into this new 12 months calendar year that we leave behind. May I suggest that you would do well to leave behind the prejudices which you have developed in this past 12 months. Some of you have faced circumstances that have caused you to be prejudiced against people, against objects, against events. Prejudices which you have, which have caused you to be separated from people about you. May I suggest that you lay them aside and not take those prejudices into the coming 12 months. Some of you have, for good reason, developed fears in your life. And you're fearful for or of one or another things. Fears which have inhibited you, inhibit us. Fears which have held us back from taking new avenues of service to the Lord. May I suggest you not take them with you, that you lay aside your prejudices and you leave your fears and forget the mistakes. Mistakes which in many cases were honest. You did not intend that the end result be as it came out to be, but they were mistakes nonetheless. Don't drag them with you into the new year. Leave them behind. Paul made many mistakes. He was first to admit it. He had many dreams. He was one who was ready to admit he didn't get to fulfill all his dreams. One of the greatest mistakes in Paul's life was that he stood by, held the coats of the people who stoned Stephen to death, in which case he is, much as they killed Stephen, Paul could have let that hold him back bear down upon him, but he didn't do it. And he says, one thing I do, I'm not where I ought to be. I've not reached a point of perfection. I'm not the person God wants and intends me to be. But I do this one thing. I keep looking forward. You know, when we're, when we're looking forward and moving, Try walking backwards. Ever try it? You get in all sorts of trouble because you can't look that way real well. 
over a shoulder, a backward glance has caused many a person to want to slap dab into a wall or a closed door. Don't look backwards. Paul says, I keep looking forward at all times. Go into this next man-made division of our lives with the confidence that all things, all things work together even when we can't understand it, all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord. But remember one thing. Look at that. We can only live this coming year one day at a time. You look at the whole of this. I look at the whole of this next year and all of the events that are going to happen in my life and in the lives surrounding me and, and try to anticipate them and it scares me to death. Live it one day. Okay. What number of song do you want to sing? Number 283. They look up at number 283. Before we stand and sing, let's get the number. <coughs> All of the two years that I have been here, that the Lord has allowed me to preach, and you have suffered with me, I have never read a poem to preach. And it's time. I'm not sure where this came from. Even looking on the back of it and at the advertisement here, I do not recognize out of what magazine. I cut it out. I've made copies and reduced it. I have a smaller copy, and I keep this at work. Dr. Ken Olson, whoever that is, wrote it. May I share it with you? I've thought about it several other times, but I've been very selfish. Now you listen carefully. Now this morning. I've dreamed many dreams that never came true. I've seen them vanish and gone. But I've realized enough of my dreams, thank God, <coughs> to make me want to dream on. I've prayed many prayers when no answer came, though I've waited patient long. But answers have come to enough of my prayers to keep me praying on. I've trusted many a friend that failed and left me to weep alone. But I've found enough of my friend's true blue to keep me trusted. I've sown many seeds that fell by the way for the birds to feed upon. But I've held enough golden sheaves in my hand to keep me sowing on. I've drained the cup of disappointment and pain and gone many days without a song. But I've sipped enough nectar from the roses of life to make me want it. To live on. Disappointments, pains, sorrows, all we've experienced in this past year. But there's hope. Because as long as we live, there's a Lord to serve and one that we can rely on. The invitation this morning is yours. As God leads you in your own particular life, in your own particular way, you respond as he speaks to you. As we stand, as we sing.